Hi, I'm Anushka Chowdhury. Today I'm going to be talking about breast self-examination. Now I think this is a really important topic because we often tell women to know what's normal for them and to be breast aware, but I really believe you can't actually do that if you don't know what it is you're feeling. Now essentially, of course the breasts lie in an area below the collarbone and up to about the sixth rib. The size of the breast will largely depend on the amount of fatty tissue within the breast. Some women will notice if they put on weight or lose weight, their breasts can change size and that's the fatty component of the breast going up and going down. And of course, within that fatty tissue is the glandular tissue, the, the ducts and the lobules, the milk producing part of the breast. And this is what gives the breast its lumpiness. On the skin, of course, you have the areola, which is the pigmented part with the nipple in the center. Now, as breasts are developing, some women get um, lumpy spots on the areola itself. These are completely normal and they're called Montgomery's tubercles, so nothing to worry about. Underneath the breast is your pec muscles. And don't be fooled to thinking that you can do any exercises to increase the size of your breast because the breast tissue itself doesn't contain any muscle at all. It's so important to know the structures of the breast because when feeling, you actually have an idea of what's under your fingers. So just to recap, the breast takes up this area of the chest. And remember, it's not just round, it actually has a bit of a tail, like a comet, going off just under the armpit. So this also must be included in the breast examination. The breast largely drains to a group of lymph nodes or glands in the armpit, which sit in this area. They don't go on the upper arm and they're not on the side of the chest. They're right up in here. And I'll show you how to examine those later. Now, the first thing with breast examination is choose a time that you're comfortable. A lot of women are quite squeamish about feeling their own breasts. They never do it because it makes them feel so uncomfortable. So build it into your routine, whether you're using moisturiser, whether you do it in bed once a month, or actually when you're in the shower, which is usually a really good time because you have some slippery shower gel on your hands. It makes the contours of the breast easier to assess. So the first thing is to inspect your breast. When you're looking in the mirror, try and have some good lighting and probably the same lighting each time because again, shadows that get cast by different kinds of lighting can cause concern. Have a look at the contours of your breast, remembering that breasts are not identical. It's very uncommon, in fact, to see breasts that are identical in shape and size. When you're looking at the contour of your breast, try and see if there's any abnormal swelling that wasn't there before. Are there any skin changes like redness or puckering? or sometimes dimpling, which can look like the skin is being pulled in. Do your nipples look odd? Is there any new redness on the nipples or any dry rashes that have appeared on the nipple or the areola? The next part of inspection is raising your hands above your head. This gives the opportunity for the breast tissue to be stretched up and you can see if there's any lumps or dimpling or pulling in that you may not have seen if you were standing in the normal position. From there, pop your hands on your hips and lean forward slightly. This again will give the opportunity to see any lumps or pulling in that you wouldn't see if you were just standing straight in front of the mirror. That's the inspection part done. Now it's time to get onto feeling. Actually feeling the breast tissue can be done in various positions, as I said. You can lie in bed or choose a time to do it in the shower or just in front of the mirror. So with your arm above your head like this, take the flats of your fingers and first start feeling in your armpit, in the area where I said the lymph nodes are. By pressing this fatty tissue against your rib cage, this will give the opportunity to see if there are any lumps to feel. Moving on to the breast, there are two ways to do this. You can either go in a circular motion using the flats of the fronts of your fingers and work your way around the breast in a firm circular motion, working your way to the middle. Or, like mowing a lawn, you can go up and down, and this is the way I do it. So I start right under the collarbone and work your way by feeling across the breast until you get to the edge. Now it's important to use the flats of your fingers rather than pinching or prodding. Because firstly, prodding is quite painful and it doesn't give you the same kind of feedback that using the flats of your fingers does. Using the flats allows you to feel the contour of your breast as you're moving along it. Because of the glandular part of the breast, the ducts and the lobules I was talking about, if you were to grab the breast tissue, you'll undoubtedly feel lumps that are there, but actually just part of the normal structure of the breast. So use the flats. 
If you think you feel a lump or you're not sure, change position, lie down, try again and see what you think is going on. And if you're not sure or if there's something new and you're worried, then make sure you go and make an appointment with your GP. Now the last part of the examination is examining the nipple area for discharge. This shouldn't be a painful affair, but by pressing around the areola, you might be able to express some discharge or giving a very gentle squeeze on the nipple itself. If you see any bloody nipple discharge or clear nipple discharge in older women, this is something that should be investigated. Now remember, anything that you feel, whether it's lumps, dimpling, bloody nipple discharge, these don't all necessarily mean that you have a cancer. But if it's something that's different for you, the message as always is to not panic, make an appointment and see your GP because you know what's normal for you.